Hey, you folks, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. And today I wanna to talk about painting in MIDI using the brush tool in Logic. So the story actually starts with a different DAW, and that is uh, Personas' flagship DAW, Studio One. They just released version four, and there's a slew of updates and people are really excited about it. And, you know, they should be excited about it. If this is the tool that you use or they use, like, Hell yeah, I'm always stoked when Logic updates because it's always in hopes of making our lives better and easier and more creative. Now, I don't use Studio One, but I find it very valuable to watch tutorials, kind of keep my eye on the landscape of what's going on across the audio world because, you know, I've developed workflows and habits that work well for me using Logic. And then you kind of put the blinders on when you do that. It's like, this works well for me and you just kind of go about your business. You don't necessarily look for better, easier ways to do things. But when I watch a tutorial where someone's using Pro Tools and they do something that's normal for them, and it's like, holy cow, can Logic do that? And I go and I look and 99% of the time, Logic can do that. And now my life is dramatically better. So I think it's worthwhile to pay attention. And I'm paying attention to what's going on with Studio One. They released the step sequencer for painting in drums. and it's, it's awesome. It looks really cool. It reminds me of Fruity Loops and it reminded me how awesome we have it in Logic to do the same thing, if not better. I don't want to start a DAW war, but I'm really excited and I want to share that with you. So first I want to bring up a mini region on this drum kit. And I'm going to loop the cycle here. So I've got the Atlanta electronic drum kit. All right. And typically what we would do is we would use the pencil tool and we would paint in notes and that looks like a 16th note. Maybe I paint it in there and there. And then I want a snare hit. I want the snare hit kind of longer, you know? Maybe this is an instrument where length of note will determine how long the note is played. And then I want a tom hit, but I don't want it that long, I want it shorter. So you get the idea. It gets tedious quickly because you're having to hand draw each note and kind of think about the pattern and you have to mess with the length of the notes and it's just kind of a pain. So instead you can use the brush tool and I access the brush tool by using key command T, access the menu here. And I'm gonna hold command and click on the brush tool to set it as my command tool. So I've got my pointer and I hold command and now it's the brush. Now what's so cool about the brush is I can go to the kick here and I can literally paint in MIDI notes for this kick hit. So say I want half note hits, right? Boom. Now I got a kick hit. And that was so fast and easy. So now let's say I want a hi-hat because I mean, really we want a hi-hat. I'm gonna set that to eighth notes and I'm gonna paint in the hi-hat. No, not there, I'm not. So I can already tell that this kick hit sounds stupid right there. And then I'm gonna determine already that I want this hi-hat pattern to be maybe more like 30 second notes. So I'm, all, I'm always going to the time quantize area here and I'm setting the value. That was stupid. Okay, and of course I want a snare. So let me set that to maybe, eh, let's go to quarter notes. And although this is a very basic, not very cool beat, you can get the idea that you can just paint in MIDI notes. And it's just as easy to get rid of them, right? You paint some notes in and using the brush tool, you can remove them just as quickly. It's so fast and easy. And I love that you can set the note value here with the time quantize because now, you know, the half note hits are the length of a half note hit. The 16th note hits are the length of a 16th note. It's awesome, I don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about it. And it's automatically quantized to the grid how I'd like it. And now you can get even more complicated 
quantization, such as, you know, 16th note, 16th note triplets. So let's eliminate these and bring that in. And you can see that the note value is different depending on the hit. And this isn't just for electronic musicians. Let's uh, bring up drummer. Power down Atlanta, cycle Kyle here, and I'm gonna convert Kyle to a MIDI region. And let's hear this. So right here, say I want a, like a long snare roll. So I'm gonna get rid of these notes. I'm gonna set my quantized value to 16th notes. And we got the snare, let's paint them in. And obviously we won't want it all that quiet, so I'm gonna go to the step editor and you can see that should be the snare. Whoa. That's horrible too. Something like that. Okay. Go back to this. Check it out. The velocity has now been written in a way that it goes upward so it gets more intense. That sounds so awesome. I love it. So you can put together basic beats, you can paint in more complicated beats, and it's just very quick, intuitive, and easy to accomplish. I mean, this isn't even for drums, it's for anything. And say you're looking at this going, okay, uh, going to this menu all the time to switch the note value, that seems sort of tedious. Well, you can go to the key command menu here. Oh, where did I go with it? And you just look for quantize, and you can set quantize parameter to next value or previous value. And I've set the key command because it doesn't have a key command set to it to shift command up or down. So check it out. Watch this right here. Shift command up or down. And now you can quickly scroll through the note values, not necessarily in this order of the menu, but more like whatever would come next, faster or slower. But it's fantastic. You can even scale quantize the scales here. It's it's amazing. It's so cool. Like let's bring up, well, let's backtrack here. All right, let's bring in software instrument, the library. I'm gonna bring in arpeggiated synth basic. Okay, let's bring in MIDI region right here. Okay, dig in. Okay, now I'm gonna set this to, we'll say quarter notes. I'm gonna set it to, I don't know, minor blue scale. Watch this. Obviously that sounds ridiculous and stupid, but you get the idea. You can quickly paint in scales you don't even got to know what the next note in the scale is. You just literally pick a scale that matches your song and you can start painting in notes. And then if you just kind of drag around, it will inform you of what note would make sense in that scale, especially if you set it to the note value here. So painting MIDI regions is so easy and so quick. Just using key command T, and I set it as my command click tool because I'm on a laptop. So I set it to the brush tool. And every time I hold command, I've got a paintbrush to just paint notes in. It's so awesome. I highly suggest you give it a try. And if this was helpful to you, as always, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe on the blog, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting videos and content to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.